been having some issues with the webcam and I thought I'd just do a different video today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my web scraper which is running it's running in VS Code using Windows yeah I know <laughs> and um, I'm using scraper API which was recommended to me by Patrick Klein and he uh, he recommended it and said it works fine when he scraped a particular site which I am also now scraping for a client and then we will just need to have a discussion about who's actually going to pay for it which is um, 29 euros per month so not cheap perhaps if they're watching and they see this recommendation scraper API might uh, like to give me a little bit of a discount but you know anyway um, what I'm doing today is I'm scraping that in the background and I thought I'd um, just if I drag this over here, then I can see it, and maybe you can see it as well. I'll just talk about, um, there you go, look, that's the progress. So, so far, 539 out of 5,000. Um, my quota is 5,000. So I've used 539 requests so far today. So this is proof of concept. Um, you saw the code in the last video, which was when I was doing the VPN rotate, which actually uh, worked apart from um, I had some issues when <laughs> when it switched to certain countries such as India the the server in India I believe was blocked um, because I was just scraping to a CSV I ended up with a gap of five records which are missing so uh, the only option there would have been to have created a database and then time stamped all the entries uh, and um, yeah, and then next time I run it, I would then skip over any all the IDs. That, um, each record's got it's called expose. It's the domain name forward slash expose forward slash ID. So then I would skip over uh, any of those IDs if they were already in my database. So that would have been one way around it. But if I'm just going to give the scraper to a client and they probably just want to output to a CSV, so really uh, scraper API is probably the way to go um, it's called scraper API but basically it's a proxy as you can see we've got the spider running in the background or you will see this updating every so often I've got a random time delay in, as you can see, import random, and I'm also using um, from random import randint. Randint is used with it's used with the um, the t the sleep function. So let me show you where that's used, and it's used here. So I'm actually um, I've actually left that in. That was from when I was using uh, a different VPN every five results. Obviously here we're using Scraper API, Web Scraper API. Scraper API client. I had to install that with pip, which was not an issue. Um, pip install scraper api dash stk sdk so there we go um, you might as well see that because if you try and copy it you'll find out that it's already been exhausted so um, yeah fill your boots <laughs> I'm running a check here to say if the platform's Linux your, your OS is Linux this is correct OS for the code um, I was doing that when I was just as a reminder, because this is intended to be run on a Raspberry Pi in due course. Uh, yeah, this was developmental actually. This was when I was I had one URL which was for the start URL. <laughs> this is using beautiful soup, but I'm using some scrapey terminology, so bear, uh, please excuse me. URL page two, basically URL page two is every page after the first page. Send in um, URL2. I'm actually creating URL2 now 
as what you just saw was where I was effectively hard coding it. So what I'm doing is I'm going off and getting an expose link, which is returned from the beautiful soup content from the top page. Um, and I'm extracting uh, from beautiful soup, I'm getting something called expose. So I'm getting all the expose hrefs on the first page. And then I'm creating a set of them because there are multiple ones of the same ID and I don't want to keep visiting the same ID over and over. So what I did was set. Set is the way to get unique values. You create a list from that set and then I'm iterating through that list and I'm obviously using URL join just to form the base URL plus the relative link back together again so that I can go and visit it. Um, the VPN bit is now obsolete because I'm using Scraper API and um, I don't actually need that anymore either. That can go. And um, these are all the values I'm collecting and I'm printing them there. And this function, pass details, handles all of the beautiful soup passing from the child page. So it's all in one place, all in one function, which is nice. Uh, my German's not brilliant, so I'd meeten Hamen Namen and has house guild. It's I'm not entirely sure it's picking those up, but um, I will find out in due course. And there we go, we're writing the row with this entire dictionary to the CV each time exposed there again. See, that's putting the link at the end of the file. So, I hope it's still working. That would be quite annoying if I've... <laughs> the um, random delay I've left in because we don't want we don't want to get blocked. And even if you're using Scraper API, there's still a chance you could get blocked if you really hammer the uh, remote server. So I've got this random delay between one and 20 seconds um, for every fifth page. So this is the code. It's on GitHub. Ah, uh, yeah, here we can see I'm just using um, F strings. I've also used an F string here because this is what I'm doing with at the moment I'm I knew there were 92 pages so I'm just updating the URL for each of the subsequent pages after the first page and so I've run through set what else was I going to talk about I can't remember but that will do I think so if you're interested in seeing the results I'm going to um, I'm going to show you the CSV at 